I tell you what, this car sure does keep me busy. Gotta plug in the laptop here so I can take a nice long extended log to check everything out because I've been making revisions slowly over time. As I mentioned in one of the last update videos, I'm trying to get all of the power out of this car with what I have so far and um, 93 octane. But I'm not an experienced tuner, so I'm taking my time, making some changes, doing some logs, realizing need some fuel here, some not here, make the changes. I've done, I don't know how many revisions in the last like three weeks or so just to get this right. But the car gets better, it gets better, and it just gets better. With that said, the purpose of this log is to log knock sensor activity. Uh, the reason being is the last revision I made, I've been getting some knock sensor activity. Um, you know, some positive knock, which is what the knock sensors are detecting as knock and pulling back timing. It mainly only does it around four to 5,000 RPM when like you're first loading it in, all the boost is coming in. And it's also when intake temps are pretty high. You know, like we're over 190 to 100 degrees intake temps. It's been pretty warm here lately in Florida. So I think with the current conditions, weather conditions, and uh, the current setup on the car, I, I may have already found the limit of 93 octane. But there's always that, uh, you know, chance that it's false knock. So, I've splashed a couple gallons of E85 in the car, I've ran it, let it cycle through. Um, so now, I just want to go ahead and take a log so I can see, you know, on some extended pools, it's still pretty warm today, 79, it's going up to like the mid 80s. And I want to see if I'm still getting um, knock. If I'm not, then I know it's fuel related. If I am, then chances are it's false knock and I need to figure that out. But I'm pretty sure it's actual octane related. I am running 24, 25 PSI and that's extended. And when the air is already hot, you know, it's the intercooler is only going to be able to cool it down the ambient. If ambient is 80, 90 degrees, you know, the car is heat soaked. It's not doing me no good. Hence why I'm putting the methanol injection kit in the car. So let's go ahead and get this going, connect the car. Like I said, I mainly just want to log the knock and what the spark is doing. Obviously it's having E85 in, it's gonna mess up all my fuel trim. So I'm not even worried about that. You know, what I'm really interested in is these right here, spark or knock cylinder one, whether it's adding or subtracting. And um, it's been in like one particular cylinder. Like it's been in like either cylinder one or cylinder three. I don't know why it's just those two, but that's where I usually see it kind of pulling back. Um, but once you get kind of going and uh, up in the RPMs, you get past 5,000, you're like going towards 6,000 wide open. And as the car keeps going, and uh, you know you'll see it you'll see that uh positive not go away and then it starts adding timing as it you want it to um but in that initial load in that's when i seem to be having a problem with this heat and obviously this is exactly what i've been trying to avoid due to the demise of the last engine heat is not easy on anything but once i get the methanol injection system in and like i said i'm I'm most likely going to be using it as a full-time system, depending on what fuel I use and kind of how I really incorporate it. But, you know, theoretically, I'm not going to be going watt all the time. Maybe. <laughs> but on the, uh, you know, on the days that I do decide to have fun and it is hot out, I want to protect the engine. But we're going to see here soon, see what happens. Um, I mean, just from driving the car around, I can tell it's a bit happier having the extra octane in it. 
So I definitely think I have already found the limit of 93, which sucks because it isn't much. It really isn't on this setup. That's what I don't like about this engine, like the way it is, because you can only do so much on 93. You can only do so much. Like, yeah, it's got power, but it's it's not the it's not like power that it's great for like daily power. You know, I would suggest that it's upwards to 400, like just the way it feels when it loads in now, it's upwards to 400 pound feet of torque. And, you know, we're, we're definitely in the high threes, maybe low 400 horsepower um, somewhere. I don't know. It feels better, but you know, the car gets hot and it, you start seeing the limitations on 93. And it's pretty bad. That's all you can get on 93. At, 24, 25 pounds of boost. I definitely think you can squeeze more power if you had a better flowing cylinder head and a slightly bigger turbo that can move more air, you know, at a lower pressure. You could probably get a little bit more power out of 93, but gotta play with the cards you have, right? So these EcoBoost engines are not, <laughs> <laughs> you need to run lots of octane, lots of fuel, lots of boost, just to make not so much power. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna make a little lick here, see what happens. I haven't been getting any audible knock, so I'll just go ahead and add that. Well, I just spun the crap out of the tires. <laughs> I, I was not expecting it to do that actually, but it done did it. Like second gear right now is pretty much just useless. Um, you roll in the throttle in the second gear, it will light them up at the top of uh, like around 5,000, 6,000 RPM. It will just start spinning the tires. So that's how you know it's making some power. It's just, I'm not making the power I want to be making, you know what I'm saying? So now I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm, I'm in, actually here, I'm in sport select shift mode. I'm gonna floor it, let it. Okay, yeah. Don't know if it pulled back anything, but so far things are looking better over here. But I'm not gonna know until I actually look at the log and see if there's any uh, knock activity. <laughs> it's definitely got more torque in that mid-range. It, it feels very similar to the SHO's torque now, which I knew that car had to have been in the 400s. It feels pretty good. It's gonna feel even better when I got that extra octane baby from that meth. My car's gonna have a substance abuse problem. Yeah, it definitely feels more spry, that's for sure. But with that said, it feels better in the heat with the ethanol in the tank. I was probably going to tune it for ethanol, but like I said, from what was suggested to me, I was told to do a 93 first. Ooh, FedEx. FedEx, FedEx, FedEx. I'm expecting something from FedEx. Is it car parts? Bro, you got my car parts? I wonder where you went. Oh no, he's going to our neighbors. Oh, he did! He did leave me a box. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and stop this. Save it so I don't lose it. All right, cool. I'll go ahead and take this in and Take a look at this data log and we'll see how everything is. Hopefully everything's nice and kosher. What did FedEx leave me today? Go ahead and open this up. I'm not sure. I think I knew what it is. Slicer open. I love getting car parts. It's like Christmas. Every time a box gets delivered. What do we got here? Oh, okay. Uh, some heat wrap. Cool. What are these? Oh, these are my nozzles for the meth. Nice. Four nozzles. I'm only going to run four 
to start with, and then we will add more later on down the road. It is a build as need kit. It sucks because ordering these nozzles, these are not cheap. These are 30 bucks a piece. You do the math, what's right here? And I can't believe I spent that much money for this. I really can't. Honestly, I was really hoping I could build this kit for under 600. But I've already blown past that goal by a couple hundred at least because I spent hours and hours looking at parts and you know researching and I was going to use nozzles for a different well it's you know I was basically trying to find the same type of nozzle that's used for methanol injection but not market it for methanol injection because I feel like they just put a huge markup on something because of a different use case whatever and I opted not to go that way because I was just concerned over fitment I'm like well you know if I get the wrong thing I want to spend twice the amount of money which is going to end up being the same thing if I just bought the right nozzles in the first place see how that went right but needless to say it's still going to be way under a thousand and and that's all I care about saving money making power but let's go ahead and take a look at that log real quick see what's going on all right so here we are we're in our log here let's go ahead and take a look at things this is right here this section here and let's see this is my first watt run this is that select shift second to third gear spinning let's zoom in here let's see what we got we got a max of 25.6 psi and let's see what was our intake temps uh da -da -da -da. Like I said, manifold charge temp, 93 degrees. Yeah, stayed that way throughout the pool, didn't change much. The intercooler may have been a little heat soaked. I was kind of sitting for a minute um, in traffic before I did that pool, so. But that's, I wanted to replicate what I saw before, so that's perfect. And now, let's look at our knock retard. So let's see, four degrees total of knock retard, global. This one was zeroed out up until the last half of it, and then it pulled back a degree and a half. Yeah, according to this, it's four degrees, three and a half. And then that last one, let's see, four and a half. Look, it was adding four and a half, add it five, add it two, add it, and then zeroed out right here at 3000 RPM, 17 PSI. And yeah, I was happy. I don't, I don't get it. I don't, I don't understand what's going on here, but I think this is a false knock issue. I don't hear it and the car doesn't lose power. Like if it was some like bad knock. So that doesn't make any sense to me what's going on there. So I have to assume it's false knock. Though I don't want to make that assumption. That's what I think it is. I mean, I know over here, obviously I mentioned it before, the wastegate door rattles. I don't know if that's not causing an issue. I mean, nothing else is looser. Rattling around, n nothing, you know. So I, I don't know, man. I guess I should let the car cool down and pull the plugs and see how they look and see if they're indicating knocking the cylinders. Cause that's a good way to know. Like, you know, if it's, if it's pulling back five degrees, then you should be able to see some signs of detonation going on in there. So we'll see. All right, got the plugs pulled out here. So let's go ahead and take a look at these. Um, see what's going on. Remember these are pretty new. Uh, let's see here. So if you look, this is cylinder one, by the way. That one don't look too bad. Let's look at cylinder two. And yeah, th this one's a lot worse. Look at all that right there. Number three. How's three look? Ooh, look at three. Oh my goodness. How though? Three doesn't really show up that bad in the logs. And then we'll take a look at four. And... 
four ain't really too bad. There's a little bit. It's a little bit right there. So that's a little concerning. So it seems like it actually is getting real knock. It's not false knock. Those spark plugs tell a whole different story. It isn't severe, but I don't want to see it. So I don't know. I don't, I don't know if there's something else going on or that is all 93 can do. So with that, I guess I'm going to have to just kind of trim it back a little bit just to keep things safe until I get the uh, methanol kit in here. And that should keep everything happy when it's hot. But you can already see, <laughs> you know, what you're dealing with, with uh, these EcoBoost engines. You don't get very far. So that's pretty sad because it's really not making a whole bunch of power either. But that's the name of the game, I guess, until I throw even more money at it. That's all I can do at the moment. So I at least know I have found the limit, which means I can finish up the video that I've been meaning to make or finish rather of, uh, you know, comparing the stock um, tune to a modified tune. So I guess I can go ahead now and finish that since I know I've hit my limit on what the car can handle with 93. So I guess that video will be coming up soon-ish, I guess. <laughs> but I think that's gonna wrap it up here for this video. I found out what I wanted to figure out, which is what I didn't want it to be, but it was. Until the next video, if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with everyone you know if you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead, subscribe to the channel, keep a lookout for the next Cars Created video.